about uh, the five rules of Sungsan uh, that you were talked about um, the, in our intensive with Wilde Kyoche. So if you re can remind uh, these five rules and explain about it. Five rules? Yeah. Don't make... Don't make... Don't make ah, what, yeah. five kinds of, uh, of mind function. Or, or how our minds function. Yeah, it's a it's a very nice teaching, and uh, the Zen master Sung San had many many genius uh, statements and teachings, and this is one of them. And he always talked about uh, don't want anything, don't make anything, don't hold anything, don't attach to anything, and don't don't check anything. So, uh, if, if you just live without any kind of mindfulness and practice, this always happens with us. That's how our thinking functions. We always want something. We always want something. We want to do practice. We don't want to do practice. We want to go outside. We want to come here. It's all of, we want to start a war. We don't want to start a war. It's all wanting, not wanting. And with this trajectory, we put ourselves in one direction and then, you know, making appears. We create things, we, we project things onto things. So that's our mind functioning and then we lose this awareness, this um, being in the present moment and seeing that floor is only brown. And then we say it's good or it's bad, we should change it, and so on and so on. And then we are right in the middle of suffering. And then what we made, we usually attach to. We attach to our identity, we are, attach we are attaching to our circumstances, our money, our job, our partner, whatever. We don't want to lose them, and of course we push all the negative things away. We don't want war, we don't want disease, and so on and so on. But, you know, we, you always get all these also, because we are living in the impermanent situation. And, um, and then, again, more, more suffering and attaching to these things. And holding is also comes from this attaching, because uh, you just have one thing in your mind. For instance, if you have fears, or if you have remorse, or you feel you did something bad, or something bad happened to you, it's uh, usually very hard to move on. Because, you know, we are more, actually, that's bad from the evolution side, we are more uh, sensitive to negative things than positive things. Positive things come and go, but the negative things, we have a sorrow or something, we hold on to it, like, you know, I hold on to this stick, Zen stick, and then I just see this Zen stick, and I attach to it, I hold it, and I don't see you. And when I just see the Zen stick, I don't see you, and I cannot help you, or cannot connect to you. So, that's holding. And then the last one is checking, which is also a big, big Zen disease, or thinking disease. Thinking makes everything um, very complicated and we always check things. Do I meditate in a correct way or was this meditation good or not? Am I good or am I a bad person? Do I do this correctly or not? And thinking on and on and on and on, do the others do it better or not or worse? So that's the checking, and these are the functions which come from the thinking mind, and these are the, the main uh, goals to let go. So if you have this in your mind, then you can, it can help you realize, yeah, now I'm checking, oh, now I'm holding, attaching. And then when you realize it, you are mindful of the, so to speak, of the problem, and it's easier to uh, avoid it.
just return to your simple, very, very simple practice. And that's like, you know, you were here for the intensive week. That was, for instance, very, very intense. Or the whole kill chain. And if you check things during such intensive practice, then you won't be able to do it. You, you have to do it one hour or one day per day. So not thinking about, oh, I have eight more uh, hours to sit or two more months. That's always checking, holding, attaching, making, wanting. We put down all of it and just we are being in the present. So these are the... Because there's a small story that some of these, all these, all these uh, five things up when two monks are, are walking through the country and they uh, get to a river and they're crossing the river but there's a woman who asks them to help her through the river because she, she can't cross the river. And uh, the old monk just uh, takes the woman and goes through the river and puts her down and they keep on walking and they, they're walking for hours on and the younger monk just after a while, just addresses the, the old man. That our, we are not supposed to touch women. Why did you do that? And the old man says, I put the woman down hours ago, but you're still carrying her. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I have another question. How these five um, rules, or five, um, yeah, um, like especially don't want how it's like merging with the fact that today now I know what I want and I feel it's the best for me the best for all beings and it's something that like I keep in my mind I put effort on it in my practice and I, I want and sometimes I feel like I might uh, get into suffer when I keep on wanting, but also, yeah, how how it's merging the don't want with put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Only go straight on now. Because I want to ask about um, trust. Um, something I feel that. And myself, and I think many people individually and also nations worldwide, something we're missing very much is a trust um, between people and nations. And uh, we, there's always a feeling, I can even see it myself, when talking to someone and if he's asking something or wants something or even just a conversation, I always kind of seeing what's the interest behind? What does he really want? What is he really trying to say? Or I don't really trust that what he's saying is you know, really good for me, or it's what he means, or he has some other motive. Um, and my question is, on the one hand, um, I'd like to let that go and be able to be more trustworthy of people and you know, be good worldwide, but on the other hand, not have that, then people can take advantage of me and maybe they really do have other motives and if I just let it go, then I would go after them and possibly get hurt or be used in a way that is not good for me. How can I trust people without getting hurt? <laughs> How can I trust other people without getting hurt? Ah, now that's a very good question. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, um, again, uh, there is often a misunderstanding, which was uh, also here in the uh, previous question, that, uh, that being, you know, a Zen practitioner or uh, or any other religious practice that you are, you know, like uh, uh, you have to make a big sacrifice and and put yourself there and then they will kill you and then you just let it. Of course, there can be situations like that, uh, but uh, but it's also uh, this uh, clear mind and seeing situations, that comes with a certain uh, power also. So you have to find your, your solid standing in, in your practice. And then you have a lot of energy and you 
are able to be more than, than most of the uh, other people.